today I will be interviewing, sitting down beside my sister. Vida Simpian of C Motives Cosmetics. She's a franchise owner of a cosmetic business. Um, yeah, so we talk about her family life. We also talk about um, how she met her husband. And by the way, it's an absolutely beautiful, beautiful, beautiful story. If you get a chance, please stay tuned. Watch this entire episode. It's intriguing. But one of the reasons why I brought uh, Vida here on the, on the show is because recently she's gone back to Africa. And if anybody know me at all, I've been talking about Africa. It's like... I'm having like a complete 360 degree viewpoint on this thing of Africa because I went from like not even thinking about, yo, I'll go back to Africa or visit Africa to like, hey, I actually want to visit. Um, so, but she had gone to Ghana, um, I think recently she's gone to Ghana recently and I knew that she was back because she had a lot of photos and I kind of wanted to talk to her about her experiences because much like myself she left Ghana when she was very very young but anyway let's go to the episode thank you all welcome to the show how are you doing I'm doing fantastic besides what's going on with this mask on I'm not used to <laughs> wearing a mask, but we we need to do what we need to do, so I'm okay with it. I heard you saying it early on that um, having a mask on someone defeats the purpose of putting a lipstick on. Yes, especially being a makeup artist. I like makeup. You know, I'm all about cosmetics and making women look beautiful with their own unique style. So putting on the lipstick and putting this mask on is just doesn't work. Because at the end of the day, I go home, I take the mask off. It's like all my lipstick is on the mask, you know. So, but, uh, you know, I like it. So, you know, I can't go and leave home without the lipstick. So regardless whether I'm covered up or not, as soon as I get outside where I can take my mask off and breathe the air, I'm, I'm okay. Yeah. No, that's true. Which makes it interesting, though, because now you have to, I remember when I was hopping on a train, they didn't have much of the procedures. They won't even like the whole three meter separation between each individuals. So right. As soon as you got onto the train, there was like a quick reminder about how you could keep your mask on. Mm -hmm. And if you needed to drink water, you could kind of like put the mask down a little bit mm -hmm. and oh. then put it back on. Wow. So that was interesting. Yes, yes, yeah. definitely, definitely. I, I haven't taken that. I like taking the train a lot. I usually take the train to Toronto. I have family in Toronto. Mm -hmm. I haven't been on the train lately, but I know that now they put in certain procedures. So for now, I'm just going to stay away from the train because I enjoy the whole, you know, taking the train. I think it's just so... You know, it's, it's so nice. elegant, it's, it's so nice, it's so calming. So <laughs> hopefully hopefully things will get back to at least semi-normal, yeah. you know. It's the new norm, people keep saying the new norm. So human beings, we're so wonderful because we, we adjust. We know how to adjust to things, no matter what life throws our way. Yeah. So I'm hoping that this will just, you know, kind of flow in easy. And then one day we'll look back and laugh at this and remember remember when we used to wear the mask everywhere we go so <laughs> yeah and we have to keep it positive no matter what right yeah mm -hmm. yeah we do we do yeah I mean, I, at least we owe that to ourselves mm -hmm. things like that but what's like the greatest thing you learn uh, during this time of uh, the pandemic and everything? well that's so interesting because a lot of people ask me this and what i learned is we gotta stop like putting um, attention on things that we shouldn't put attention on. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of times it's like so many drama going on and things like that. With, when this happened, it makes you realize how important life is, mm -hmm. how important the people in your life are, regardless of them being extra or not, because mm -hmm. we're all extra in our own ways, right? Mm -hmm. So I always tell them, you know, like, don't stress about that. Don't stress about who said this, who said that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and realize that we're all different, you know, we're different, but, and unique. Mm -hmm. So we have to learn to work within that uniqueness mm -hmm. and not in, you know, our differences, which, you know, you see all over the world now, it seems like people are now speaking up. You see a lot of chaos around because now people are finally saying enough is enough and they're speaking up. Mm -hmm. But I think... 
COVID kind of brought that out of us somehow, you know? It kind of shook us up to realize that, you know, life is, you know, complicated and, you know, yeah. And that is short, too. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and, I, and, I, and I see what you, what's going on there. Um, I just learned about what was what's happening in Nigeria with the SARS. Oh, um, yes. Nah, that I had no idea about. I didn't even know it existed. But apparently the size, um, this called SARS um, unit in Nigeria, uh, like a special agent unit, oh. that was actually um, created like years and years ago, decades ago, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to sort of um, counter fight the um, bank robbers, like criminals, things like that. Oh, wow. But ironically, they themselves have become criminals in a sense in that they're criminalizing or at least like um, violating the people that they're supposed to be protecting and serving. Oh, And that's wow. just been floating. A friend of mine brought that to my attention mm -hmm, this mm -hmm. past weekend and I haven't really had time to really like look into it because I don't really know a whole lot about it. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it came to an end. Um, I think the president came out and they terminated that department now. But the danger here is that, okay, so we're going to terminate one department, and then what is the solution? Are we going to now replace it with another department? How is that going to be about? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we can have people, especially from where I'm from. Mm -hmm. The mentality is very different over there. People with higher up positions to take advantage of the locals. Yes, yes, yes. Locals. Yeah. Um, you know, like they're talking about the chaos and other things. Yes, a yes. A lot of... Yes. yes, and um, speaking of where you're from, I'm, I was born in Ghana, mm -hmm. and just as I was there actually in January, saw, all, of, yeah, yeah. all of January, and I hadn't been there like in over 40 years, so being back was a little nerve-wracking, but as soon as I got there, mm -hmm. it just like, I felt like I'm home, mm -hmm. which is the strangest feeling. I, I haven't been there in a while since I was little. Mm -hmm. And so I felt like I was at home. And I realized that even just... And um, I realized that a lot of things have changed in Ghana, which is good. But there's some things that are still like just being held on to that is actually detrimental to the well-being of the nation, you know. But the interested thing is we have a new president mm -hmm. and this president is making changes real good progress good changes but again people are fighting it because remember um africa has a lot of freedom there but there's also corruption mm -hmm. so the people that are in, are corrupt are in high places so when this new president comes along right, right. yeah and i don't care i'm gonna say it someone could just give me pro uh, trouble or whatever for saying this but Africa, we need good leaders, and we need to get rid of some of these people in high position that are corrupt. Mm -hmm. They're taking things from the people, which they shouldn't, and they're saying that they're for the people. Mm -hmm. But this president is wonderful, and he's doing new things, and actually, this year was the year of the return. So our president opened our, the Ghana borders the Ghana to all, border yes. To a lot of you know, Ghana yeah. that's been uh, there and U.S. Yeah. African American, uh, yes, to return yes. to, return yes. to yes. Africa, yes. to return to Ghana. You know, and if they want to stay, they can stay, stay and make a home. or make a home there to feel that this is your home. Which you know, if you trace back ancestry, mm -hmm. their home was basically Ghana. Obama went there, remember at the yeah, I remember that, yeah. yeah, the castle he went I there. there at the That's when we were, yeah, we were yeah, the yeah. So he's making a lot of changes and I was so happy and proud of it because being a Ghanaian African, mm -hmm. I ha have been away from home a long time and going back and seeing that yes, there's this uh, a president that cares and he's surrounding himself with people that care mm -hmm. about Ghana. That's a good thing. So it makes me want to go back. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, definitely. Oh, that's, definitely. that's amazing. Yeah. Um, so, so you're in Ghana. And mm -hmm. What's like your, the first thing that goes through your mind when you land and get off the plane? I know it's always nerve-wracking. Mm -hmm. right, but like, what's the first thing that goes right through your mind when you get to Ghana? And yes. You're like, oh, man, this is Africa. This is what I'm Wow. That's a good that's question. 40 years. 40 years. That's a long time. Long time. That's a good question. When I landed, 
The first thing I did was I looked at the plane that I had just landed because I remember um, the plane taking me to Canada when I was little with my oldest sister. How old were you? I was uh, eight years old when I left. When you left. When I left with my oldest sister. Uh, even my youngest sister has been back. Who is she was born? My youngest sister was born uh, in Toronto, and she's been back like three or four times. Mm -hmm. So I was like, "What took me so long?" But everything happens for a reason. So when I landed there, I looked, and on our plane it says "Aquaba," and in our language that means "welcome." Mm -hmm. So Ghana has always been a very welcoming nation, mm -hmm. which is is positive, but it can also be negative because then different nations will come and like the British nation came and they stayed there for the longest time mm -hmm. and all these, you know, of course, the slavery and everything like that. Mm -hmm. But they're very, very welcoming. Mm -hmm. Yes, they're very, very welcoming. So that was the first thing I saw on the plane, Aquaba. And then just this feeling of um, freedom, mm -hmm. which is so strange because I haven't been there in a while mm -hmm. and I've heard stories about Africa and this and that, all these things on the news that it was so false because I felt freedom and I felt a sense of peace and at home. Mm -hmm. And the air, the smell of the air brought memories back. Mm -hmm. I don't know how, some memories that was like when I was little hidden locked away, away, hidden away. Right. Oh, yes. <laughs> Yes, and then even tasting the food, the water, just like triggers that memory of that. Mm. And um, I guess that's why I would like to go back again. And uh, actually, we're going to try to make another trip with um, my sister and her, her family and a friend of mine who, who is from Africa too, but she hasn't been there for a while. So, because when I came back, I could not stop talking about it in the pictures, too. Uh, I've seen the pictures. Yes, yes, yes. I've seen the pictures. And that was not even, you know, half of the pictures I took. I wish, like, you know how pictures doesn't, they always say pictures does not do justice, right? Like, you can't unless you're there. Gorgeous, gorgeous, beautiful place. Like, places that, you know, like, I don't know if the people that live there, I really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. But being born from there mm -hmm. and leaving at an early age and coming back, I was like, this is gorgeous. This they will never show on TV. And maybe that's a good thing, because if they showed uh, all the beautiful places, probably everybody will be there. <laughs> <laughs> everybody will be going there, which right. is, yeah. Which yeah, we're yeah. just, yeah, yeah. so. You know, in due time, I'm sure in due time. But mm, yeah, that was the first first feeling I got, just the freedom and just like being at home. It was quite amazing, quite amazing. Yeah. I was telling yeah. a, a friend of mine the other day, mm -hmm. we were talking about some of the situation that's happening right now uh, with regards to the Black Lives Matter injustice and different things. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the conversations that came up, I said, hey, listen. Friends, you know, people are making the argument that, oh, why are corporations suddenly now sort of like handing over, you know, positions to, you know, black people and right now. I said, look, first of all, I guess they're realizing that they messed up. And so now they're trying to rectify that by filling in these positions that they, would have, they could have done a long time ago. And furthermore, when I was in Africa, I, I had no idea I was black. <laughs> it's crazy, but... When you live in Africa, you don't really know your you don't mm -hmm. even know your black because it's not a terminology we use. Mm -hmm. It's not it's not in the vocabulary, you know. Mm -hmm. But as soon as you come here, you start to realize that you're oh, you're a human being, but you belong to a different class of people. Mm -hmm. Yes. Whereas Africa is just Yo, I'm a human being. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. all they see. I mm -hmm. mean, we go by the family name. Yes. What's yes. the last name? Yeah. Those are the things that are important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here it's irrelevant. Yes. Here it's about your skin to them first. You know? Yes, yes. So a lot of these issues that is coming about now, I feel like um, if we had done everything right the first time around as humanity, as human beings, mm -hmm. then we probably wouldn't be at this stage in 2020 trying to fight things that we don't really need to be fighting. Yeah. For me, um, morally, I think, wherever there's good exists evil, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times it's like, it's not, sometimes it's not even about just 
the color per se. Sometimes it's also about, you know, good overcoming evil, right? Because there's a lot of people that if it wasn't for the color too, they would judge on something else. Right. So the color right. is the main, main thing because it's the first thing you see, right? You see, yeah. Yes, and he, as human beings, we're very visual. Mm -hmm. So we usually see the person first and then, you know, even without wanting to, we make our judgment mm -hmm. based on what that person looks like. Mm -hmm. But this whole thing with the black and white, I remember when I came to Canada in the 70s. This is early 70s, okay? Mm -hmm. I remember just the whole fact that I was from Africa and I didn't speak the language and all this thing was an issue and people were commenting, oh, do you, do you have a pet elephant? Do you, you know? And I said, no, not an a, a elephant, I have a giraffe. Right. You know what I mean? Which I, like, come on now. Like, why you just stop an elephant? Why you know, go? yeah. I live on the tree, whatever perception, false perception you think you have about me. Right. Don't put it on me first. Get to know me and ask me question if you don't know. And then that way we can communicate. That way the dialogue open. But if you're already judging me on, based on my color, then you know what? It's on you, not on me, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. Because the conversation is essentially over at that at point. At that point. You haven't even... Yes. Said, hey, let me open the table for more possibility for yes. the conversation or get to know the person. Because basically it's just you wanting to put what you think mm -hmm. of me on me. Mm -hmm. I don't have to accept that. Right. Because just because my skin is darker than yours or whatever does not make it uh, that I'm better or that you're better or anything like that we just ha happen to be you know like i always say the creator is a creator he likes he likes like painting a masterpiece mm -hmm. you can't just use one color only right. to get the whole the beautiful you know a, a, a scenery or anything like that you have to li use different colors it's like a box of crayon mm -hmm. how can you only have one color and think that you can make a masterpiece out of that no you have to have all different things that are judging you based on your color they're so limited that even if there was only one color mm -hmm. that looked like them they'll still find something right. to complain about or right. to hate right. so it's basically just the hate and that hate energy can come from anywhere yeah. it's just right now it's directed on uh, you know dark skinned people because that's the first thing you see right? right yeah and sometimes it's envious I think so envious sometimes too Oh, yeah, I mean, it comes from a lot of places. You're definitely right. Mm -hmm, Actually, mm -hmm. I was good. that was going to be like my next question is like, <laughs> uh, where, where does it come from? But you're absolutely right. It could come from, um, you know, I like the term envious. I also think a lot of us, we're not, um, as human beings, we're not fully satisfied. With the, and that has nothing to do with money or mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. the cars you drive, where you live, and things like that. Exactly. I, I think that we're not complete. Exactly. Yeah. You no. Know, no matter how much success we have managed to accumulate or have achieved, mm -hmm. it's just not complete. And because we're not complete, uh, we tend to take that extra negative energy mm -hmm. onto whatever we can take it on. It's kind exactly. of like a bully. Mm -hmm. A bully bullies you not because you know he's um, not, he bullies you because there's something lacking. Where he comes from, maybe with in his household, he mm -hmm. probably grew up like that. He probably grew up in a very violent you know situation and now he doesn't know how to communicate you know, yes communicate mm -hmm. and sometimes he believes you because that's a way of like sort of communicating with you yeah and saying hello that's his version of hello by bullying you around and pushing you around. yeah because we all learn uh, at an early age like you you see kids playing they're not worried about the color of that person or this or that they just want to know do you want to play right that's right so as we're growing up, and it depends on the household at first, right? When you're growing up in a household that, you know, they praise all different colors and, you know, they say, you know, what, treat others as you like to be treated, all that. That child is going to grow up and with that sense of like, I'm important, but this person is important too. And they're going to grow up treating people as how they want to be treated. But if you come from a, some place where it's like, that's all you know, it's like, you know, this color or this, this is bad, this, 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 this. Mm -hmm. 
Most of the time they'll grow up thinking that's the right thinking. A lot of times they have to fight through it and they'll come out not thinking that way. Mm -hmm. But again, like I, I mentioned, it's hate and envious because if you have joy within yourself and you know who you are, mm -hmm. why would you want to hurt anybody else? But if you don't feel good about who you are and what you have, mm -hmm. you're always going to say, oh, you know, point outside this, this person is my problem. I have this problem because this. So you're pointing out all the time instead of figuring out why is it that I feel this way inside. It's like, I feel like, you know, psychology here, 101 or something. But it's, you only give out hate if you have hate inside, right? And if hate doesn't, can never cancel out hate. You have to find a way to just can you know cancel it with love and love meaning like you don't you're not a pushover you're not going to be used and abused or anything. Mm -hmm. But when someone comes at you with hate, you know better. You're going to respond to them in not in a hateful way, right. but you're going to respond to them in a place where you're you know where you're coming from, right. out of a place of love and knowing who you are and knowing your value. Right. And when you know your value, they feel it right away. And you can address that. So I think it's one person at a time. I've had so many um, incidents where, yeah, people, I could, they say it in my face. Like in the 70s, 80s, they'll say it. You know, I prefer a certain, even I prefer a certain shade of black people. I prefer more like Halle Berry. I'm like, okay, that's your, your personal taste, but you know, you limit your, yourself to so many rainbows of even just other possibility, other possibility of yeah. knowing new people because you think a black person should look like Halle Berry. She's a beautiful woman. But also that's what has been sold because Halle Berry really could be basically the next celebrity, the next sex symbol. Yes, so yes. So if somebody has taken you um, 20, 40 years ago, and said, I see tremendous talent in you. You are a model. And the class of your posters mm -hmm. everywhere mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and wherever else you can get it, where the standard of beauty has already been set. So yes, they may still see me and be like, nah, I'm not going to talk to that guy. But when they see you, they're infatuated with that idea because that's the standard that's accepted. Yes. The human mind is a very interesting thing. I was reading this thing where like, the baby baby starts to tell colors at what you tell like the mothers and fathers mm -hmm. and things like that at three months old mm -hmm. at six years old they start to tell colors and, mm -hmm. and things like that so when you grow up in a sort of environment you can really teach people say oh you know this thing just coming about but no mm -hmm. these, these people learn these things the energy around them the yes 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 them, yes yes definitely it really does come from that and that's funny how you you mentioned um, you know the model and stuff because you know you know I did that in Toronto I was mm -hmm. acting and modeling, and a lot of times I'll go for you know auditions and stuff and I'll I, I told my agent send me to I don't care blonde blue eye the girl they're looking for send me because once I get there then they can feel my personality they'll know okay this this girl whatever right, mm -hmm. and so. There was times I would go for auditions and I would be the only black lady there, black young woman there. Mm -hmm. And um, I felt comfortable with that because it's like someone has to make the step right. to say, you know what, there's beauty in all shape and sizes and colors and you should not limit yourself to just only that because you think that's what's going to sell. Cause mm -hmm. Now, the modeling and all these campaigns are coming out. Oh, no, 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 we got to get more diversity and stuff. But it took a long time, and it took a long time, it took a long time and a it was, sacrifice. yes, breaking down some doors and this and that, and it's opening slowly. But again, like I said, the hate will always try to close the doors that we have opened. So we can't let it do that, you know, and we got to always try to go out of our comfort zone, you know? Mm -hmm. Have different friends that are from all over the world. I, I just, to me, I, I, I love people, period. I don't care where you're from and whatever. If you, you know, if your mind and your heart is good, let's, let's build something, let's do something together, right? right? right. So, yeah, 
It's interesting, yeah. It's definitely, definitely, definitely. Look, if this is your first time on the network watching the show, be sure to subscribe to the channel. All right, subscribe to the channel. It's absolutely free to hit that like button. It's absolutely free to hit that bell and hit that notification so that every time um, an episode is released, you get an opportunity and you get a notification in your mail and you'll be the first to watch those episodes. And also, it's free as well. We don't charge for you sharing the content. You know, if you like the content, impact you some way, share it. Uh, we need to get out there. People need to know that the channel does exist. Um, aside from like me and my 500 friends, it'd be nice for the rest of the world to know about it too. So be sure you know that you're sharing it and, and leave your comment. Commenting on the channel is absolutely free. I guarantee you, I will not charge you a dime for that. So you have a business. You've been doing uh, this makeup thing. I, I believe I was here when it started. Was I here when it started? Yes. Was after I was done? No, you were here when it started. Okay. I was uh, just beginning, and I did know the whole thing about business. Remember, I'm coming from a field where it was acting and other people managing it right. for you. Right. So now... Um, I realized I have another talent that I'm very, very good at, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, actually, my youngest sister opened that up for me, this whole business. Mm -hmm. So when, when, once I got into it and started learning about it, I was like, wow, okay, I have this talent, too. Um, when I first started, I made a lot of mistakes, like any, anybody else, right. starting a new business yeah. and... Uh, you know, I bought too many things. I have like stuff that I bought too many things because I thought, oh my goodness, I, ha I just have to keep buying, buying in ca right. case someone, you know, will come to my place and I have nothing. So I learned a lot that I, I deal with the, uh, the client first. We find out what is her particular and unique um, beauty, mm -hmm. how we can address this so that she can you know, intensify that unique beauty. So that's basically what I do. And not only just makeup per se, but I also touch on, you know, um, as women, we, we like to talk and we like to communicate. So I'll touch on whatever is going on in their life that they feel that they, you know, they feel comfortable to, you know, to share with me. So, so now I'm doing not only the beauty, but I'm helping others to realize that, you know, I, Things will work out. We talk it out. And, you know, if I can give advice, because, you know, I'm a little older than, than you, right? <laughs> I'm not going to tell you. I can tell you my age. I don't care, because that's wisdom. I, well, I my, earned that. My mother always said, don't act old. Yes, I yes. Say, yeah, but I earned that wisdom the hard way, okay? Right. Hard knock life. So when I, when I share something with them, they know it's coming from the heart that maybe they can use. So not, not a only am I doing just the whole outside thing, I'm doing the inside, which I feel so honored mm. to be in, because now you're in, so, yeah. And I had to take this, you know, getting into the whole uh, cosmetic industry to kind of open that up, that I have this unique talent too, right? Yeah, so yeah. I'm blessed for that, yeah, That's definitely. Mm -hmm. um, it's absolutely amazing that, you know, and your company have come a long way. Mm -hmm. I've seen images online yes 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 are. i mean we live in two different cities today but being online and being on instagram or facebook whatever else platforms uh, it doesn't make it seems like you know, it's not foreign anymore mm -hmm. like back in the days you can even communicate with someone in the village right <laughs> not with your friend you yes, know so yeah it, you know it's all like it's all relative it's yes like, yes so yes form, i want to say congratulations oh now, thank you the, your brand is Modus, right? Modus. It's um, the company is called Market America. They're based in the uh, U.S. and it's uh, one guy, chemist, that was uh, working um, in the corporate world, mm -hmm. and he would invent certain things, and he wasn't being acknowledged for that, like mm -hmm. that he was part of it. So he branched off, opened up his own company to help people with. First of all, start off as a health. Mm -hmm. You know, the supplements and things like that and getting your, you know, getting the right nutrients in your body. And then his wife said, OK, why, why don't we do that in uh, cosmetics, too? So our makeup motives cosmetic is mineral based. So when you put it on in our skincare, so when you put it on your skin, you're not damaging your skin. It's healthy. 
And of course, you know, makeup you put on your skin is going into your system, right? Mm -hmm. So the minerals is more healthier. Mm -hmm. So, and the fact that she's, um, she brought that up. She, so a woman entrepreneur through her husband's company, she branched out there and then they branched out to the skincare lines and things like that. So they put a lot of time and effort into the business. Mm -hmm. So you don't see, we don't have big names. Actually, we do, but not because we're paying them, right? Mm -hmm. But they didn't have so many commercials and things like that because they put the money into the products more. The products and and yes. And they let their beauty advisor, which I'm under, I'm considered a beauty advisor and I'm franchise owner because mm -hmm. I have a part, the cut in the business. Right. They let us speak for ourselves and talk about how the makeup is for us and our clients. They let the clients speak for themselves instead of big Hollywood names and stuff. Now we have um, Jennifer Lopez using the products. We have Lala Anthony who is... Uh, part of the company and her hers is uh, called motives for lala because she wanted more like uh, yeah. uh the, it's personalize it with the color for you know women of color exactly. so she got into it and so there and she's friends with these ladies mm -hmm. so they came on board she's friends with jennifer lopez lauren uh, yeah and so she started this business and i got into it i got to meet them mm -hmm. i went to some of the convention and it's just People from all over the world, mm. all over the world, black, white, uh, Indian, Chinese, everybody's there because that's an opportunity for you to have a piece of the business yeah. and, uh, you know, make it your own. So I thought that was fantastic when I went. Um, so with this business, if somebody wanted to also do what you're doing, um, is there like a possibility where they can also be a partner franchise? Oh, yes, definitely, like definitely. That? That's why. I'm not only like a beauty advisor, makeup artist with this company, I'm also an unfranchised owner, which means I have a part in the business and um, anyone can do it. You gotta be business minded, remember? We're all entrepreneurs, so if you want to be um, a partner, you contact me on Instagram, uh, Vida Motives. I can give you, if you wanna change mineral cosmetics and the skincare, it's unbeatable, our products. It's unbeatable. Unbe and that's why, actually, I got into it and became part of that uh, unfranchise owner. That is amazing. So I can give you some information. You can search them up, Market America, or Motives Cosmetics, or Lumer de Vie, which is our skincare line. So we have lots of different products. It's not just only makeup. So you can uh, specialize in skincare or your makeup or even health. You know, so it's not just for only women. Men can get into it. We have a lot of men that are in the makeup part because the men can sell makeup to women like nobody's business. So, mm. yeah. And, um, yeah, and then there's, we have conventions. We have teachings, too, to teach you how to manage this. We have custom blend foundation. So you can have your own uh, kit where you can, for your clients, you can make their own custom makeup for them that to suit their their skin tone which is amazing so a lot of salons uh, are, um, usually get in there and they're very interested in so I, I stand behind them a hundred percent and I'm and yeah. I like that you mentioned that um, just to give you a quick scenario I know we're wrapping things up mm -hmm. but just to give you a quick scenario being a photographer I taking a model a male model um, black guy mm -hmm. me um, into the uh, the shop, the shoppers, to get some makeup mm -hmm. because we're going to do a photo shoot. And there was only three um, tonality there that would go with our skin. Yes. Like the exact one. You have to blend this and blend that. Yes. And things like that. So how many different uh, shades do you all have for, like, black people? As many as there is shades in dark skin because a lot of times we think it's just dark black skin but black skin has so many tones we got yellow undertone orange all these things so the great thing about our company is that they have expanded that's why motives for lala came into it so she has a lot of range of different uh, colors for our skin mm -hmm. tone plus the custom blend 
You can custom blend uh, foundation and powder, lipstick, eyeshadow, to see, suit that specific color tone, right? Mm -hmm. So there is no boundaries to that. And uh, that one is really interesting. They have classes to teach you how to do this. So you're almost like playing the scientist with the minerals mm. to form this beautiful color to match that person person and I even had one made uh, a few of them made for me and fit me exactly people will be like I mean I have flawless skin to begin with excuse me but <laughs> but uh, when people say oh my wow your skin what kind of makeup you use right I'm the billboard for that company right. because I stand by yeah, it I so see your photos and yeah yeah, are, yeah. I great like they're like amazing you look like you're in your Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And the older you get, the more you know you need to stand behind good products. Absolutely. Ones that are used mineral, and you know minerals and stuff, they're found in the earth. So if they're found there, it, it's okay for your skin and, and putting it in your body too, because there's a lot of stuff, good products out there, but there's also a lot of like not so great products. Yeah. For even for your whole system and stuff because you're ingesting it through your skin and your pores so yeah this it's fantastic and I've been in this for a little while and I'm just touching on just a little bit of it there's so much more to learn and so so creative in this part and uh, it's become like a, a community it's like a second family you know because they really support you you know and there's other beauty advisors even here where we are here in Windsor, there's Toronto, so we all connect together, we meet, so it becomes like like this bond, which, you know, everybody needs that when you're first starting. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's wonderful, yeah. So I want to first thank House of India in Windsor, Windsor, Ontario, if you're around our area, uh, in Windsor, Ontario, for allowing me to shoot this next episode in the facility a few months back when I was still in Windsor. But I was in Windsor for a week because I just left London and went down to Windsor for a week. And I ate there every single day. All seven days I ate there and I brought friends that also had a cuisine as well and really, really loved it. So I loved it, had a great time. I hope that you would, if you get a chance, try it out and hopefully um, they work out for you. But they're a great place and they're located on 325 Orlet. Um, that's Windsor, Ontario. All right, cool. So let's get on with the show. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And your boys are all growing up now, too. They're yeah. all grown. One of them had a kid. Or yeah, so I'm a grandma. Oh I am a grandmother of a three-year-old boy little boy he's so adorable he's wonderful so you know and i have uh, two boys of my own so 23 my oldest that had the child yeah. and i have a 16 year old yeah. and then my husband so i have a house full of boys so man they make me tough though <laughs> i'm a i'm tough because of them and not tough in a bad way but i could just i'd do my own thing too right and so how did you manage to like raise all these guys it's just like you know did you ever want like did you always want boys or they just and then you just accepted it or did you yeah well boys? you know what for me i thought i was just gonna travel the world and do my own thing you know when you're in your 20s you just don't think about early 20s you never think about uh kids and husband and family so i did do that i traveled to europe actually all on my own oh, wow. so i mean i came from a very strong family yeah. you know my the women in my family are very strong and the men too but the women are really strong so and uh so growing up i never wanted to get married i wanted to i thought i was just gonna travel the world do my thing but you know what as you as you grow, you, your perception starts to change. Mm. And then I was like, well, it would be nice to have a family. And I had this whole picture of, you know, the family. But I never, I didn't care whether I had a boy or a girl, you it know. Yeah, it didn't matter at all. <laughs> it's, still, it's still a challenge to be, you know, to be a parent. So, yeah, no. But um, then I had the boys. And then that's when I was like, oh, it would have been nice to have a girl. <laughs> After the boys, I don't know why, but... 
my sister ended up having the girls. Oh, your sister you had the girls. And she, yeah, oh, both well, my well, oldest well. sister, the one in the past that yeah. I came to um, Canada from Africa with, yeah. she has boys, so she has two boys. Right. And then I had my boys, and we're like, and we have lots of boys in our family. So I was like, okay, we're just going to have boys, and that's right. it. But we need a girl to balance things. So my younger sister had the, the girl, beautiful girl. She's so much like me. You know, her mom is like a little tomboy, but the daughter is like so ee, 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 extra like me. <laughs> so there's so many times where we're like, you know, she likes pictures. I like pictures, taking pictures. So when we were in Ghana, I would be taking a picture. Oh, with you, yeah. yeah, she came. Oh, wow. We brought her. And this is the second time she's been there. And uh, my sister is married to an uh, Italian guy. So the Italian came. And this is his second. And he wants to buy land. He likes Ghana so much. He wants to buy land. Uh, yeah. And maybe they can go and when build, they would, and build something and live sense. there. Yeah. So she came and... Uh, we like to take pictures, so when I'm taking pictures, there's a picture that I have that I have to post, because I'm doing my pose, mm -hmm. and behind me, I don't see her. She's doing the exact pose. She's photobombing. And I'm like, man, that's little Vida there. That's mini me there. That's so <laughs> we get along so much. So even in, in Ghana, she, her parents had, you know, we had a big house, so my mom has a house there. Mm -hmm. So they had their room, sh but she had to sleep with me because my family didn't come with me, right? I went by myself because the kids were, um, they're in high school and, you know, I didn't want them to miss anything. Next time they'll come. So she slept in my bed. I read to her. I remember how the kids were. I read to her. We talked. So, yes, I do have a little girl, so through my sister, so which is so nice. She's a beautiful, beautiful family. So yeah, my boys are wonderful too. Just so insightful and so, I don't know how they got so mature and so full of wisdom. Sometimes I look at them. Probably got it from their mother. Oh, I, I hope so. Mm -mm. I try, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, I always tease my husband now. He's Romanian, imagine that. We're right. like, yeah, right. my whole family are like a mixture and a half. So I have Russian, uh, Russian and Ghanaian cousins and stuff. So a whole lot of flavor. Yeah, so that was never really an issue for, I think, just being from Africa in itself. I don't really think we have, like you were talking about, really issues with, you know, black no, and white know. and we stuff. No. Uh, it's not recognized. I've no. been back for so long. Yeah. I'm sure, like, it's not something... It's just not a part of the upbringing there. It's not part of the doctrine. It's not part of the mm -mm -mm. teaching. No. It's, not, it's just not part of it. No. It's, like I said, it's your family name. That's the yeah. thing that comes up. With yeah. Your last name with your father and things like that. But that's amazing. So do you... Okay. So a lot of the time, mm -hmm. especially for females, um, when they don't want to have, say, a family, or they don't want to start a family, they don't want to settle down, mm -hmm. they're not going to be married. Um, a lot of the time, what, things, what tends to happen is their friends start settling down, and therefore that sort of gets them thinking, oh, maybe mm. oh, my best friend just settled down now and just yeah. started family. Do you remember exactly the, the, the tipping point for you when you said, ah, oh, maybe yeah. my friend settled down? Now. Yeah, for me, I what is going on with, like, the decision a friend makes for herself and stuff, mm -hmm. because in the end, I have to live with whatever decisions I make, and if it's according to somebody else's decision, then it never goes well, right? So for me, I think it happened after uh, traveling. I used to travel to Europe all by myself. Like, I had friends that I would visit from just, you know, meeting them, you know, in Toronto. I was living in Toronto. So mm -hmm. from traveling Europe and, you know, it was great and stuff when I was around my f friends. And then I'd come back. And I would be back in Toronto and living in my apartment. No one's there. I'm by myself. And I mean, I like my own company. But after a while, you're like, hmm, you know, you start thinking about that. Wouldn't it be nice to have someone at first? No, it's just someone 
that you know I can do different things with. And mind you, I had boyfriends and whatever. As female, you never have a problem with that. Right. But someone that would have the same kind of goals as yourself and whatever. So I think it started then after traveling and traveling and traveling and come back and there's no one there waiting for you. And yes, you'll find someone, you know, whatever to date and whatever. But no, to have someone that's like just significant in your life mm -hmm. that is always there, that, that will see your good times and your bad. And um, plus any man that can handle me, I am marrying him, okay? <laughs> I said, <laughs> that's a good thing because, you know, not to say I'm difficult, but I know what I want and you know what I mean? And right. I'm not going to be like the the little lady, like, ah, okay, be yeah, kitchen, be in the kitchen. And, and, yes, no, 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 yes, no. Yes, yeah, yes, exactly. So um, I knew that I had to also be careful in how I chose because a lot of times being a young woman and everything like that, a lot of times they chose me, I didn't choose, right? Mm -hmm. Basically, and I would be like, oh, well, he seems interesting, but he was, you know, interested in me, in me more than I was with he him. Was yeah. yeah, so, um, and a lot of times I was like, no, I gotta find someone that's willing to handle the tough time. I don't want just someone that's just there for, you know, when everything is good Probably and time. yeah, yeah. And when it's a little rocky, yeah. it's bailing out. And right. sometimes I wasn't even planning on doing that. Maybe it was a test, but I didn't intentionally do that. Mm -hmm. uh, we would get into issues and I would watch to see how this person re react to the issues that at hand. Mm -hmm. Whether he would think, okay, this can be solved, this can be worked out, or will he be like, oh, this is too much, let me just, let me yeah. yeah. So I watched that. And um, a lot of times, it's so strange, I was the one that bounced. I don't know why. Oh, you I would run. You're I was, the yeah, bride. like the runaway bride, yeah. you know. <laughs> you know? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Be yeah, when I watched, I'm like, oh my goodness, was I, was that me? But I was like, kind of terrified of the whole marriage thing. Mm -hmm. Was a man try to restrict who I am? Mm -hmm. Because I have to be the little woman and do this and do that. Was that like a proposal for you, like, at, in, in those years, uh, and the men that you were meeting? Was that like a specific proposal where it's like, okay... We're going to get married, but I need you to be like my wife, like the lady, you know. There's, yes, there's a couple times. Uh, one time now, I'm giving you all the nitty gritty here. Yeah. My yeah. goodness. Yeah. Tell you, we're going to have a, a <laughs> show here. Anyways, I was engaged. Um, now, like I, when I say um, uh, black, white, whatever, okay. For me, I'm international. Mm -hmm. A man is a man is a man, right? If you're solid inside... That's fine. So I was engaged to an Italian guy, and actually I went to Italy. And uh, I had to run away from there because I'm not saying all Italian men are like that. They respect their mom and everything like that. That's cool. Mm -hmm. But I'm engaged to you, not to your mama. Mm -hmm. So when you can't make decisions mm -hmm. for you and I mm -hmm. without basing it on what your mama says... Mm -hmm then I have an issue with it because you're not living with your mama. You're living with, you're going to be with me right. as, you know, and it should be man and woman, not man, woman, and my mama. So I was like, <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I, yeah, I was like, no, when a man, yes, I want you to respect your, your, your mom for sure, because if you don't respect your mom, how are you going to respect me, right? So I look for that too, but when your mama's decision outweighs what we are living or we're going to be living, then that's a problem. Because it's you and I, at the end of the day, your parents, your mom is not in our home. So I had to run off like the runaway bride from Italy because I was like, no, I, 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 you know, I'm not having that. I cannot have that. Because there'll be issues, issues that we shouldn't be having right. so yes i came back to canada and i let that go so but most of them were basically 
um, the same thing, it's funny, the same thing I did not want, that's the thing that, you know, came to me. So sometimes you got to be careful. Stop saying, I don't want this, I don't want this. You should say what you do want, mm -hmm. you know. Then, yeah, because uh, apparently, I, I mean, I think there's this energy out there. Mm -hmm. The things you say you don't want are the things that start to attract yeah. you or, or whatever comes out of your mouth. Yes. Those words are powerful. Yes, to you. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So let's go. I'm taking you to church now, okay? So Basically, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Really, you can do church at home too, okay? Yes. But I'm, you, you know what I mean. But I'm like, okay, the, our Creator, the Creator spoke into being things, mm -hmm. and He said it was good. It was good, right? Right. So if we want good, 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 why are we always saying things we don't want, and then are surprised when it manifests or shows up, right. and then we're like, oh, but that's not what I want. You, yes, inside you don't want that, but your words are manifesting. Because, <laughs> yes, the universe heard you, so it will give you what you're saying, right? Because you are a creator, you're made in his image. So if you say something negative all the time and this and that, don't be surprised when that same thing you don't want shows up in your life. So I try to turn things around and be more positive, whether the situation looks positive or not. Remember, you're not. Sometimes it takes time for that energy, the good energy, to manifest. Mm -hmm. So even if it's still bad, it's still bad, whatever it is, don't keep repeating that, you know? Keep repeating what you want it to be. And eventually it will show up. And I, you know, I know that because I've lived that and I've seen the results of that. Right. Yeah. So I try to motivate everybody to just like, don't say what you don't want, you know? Right. Say what you want. I like that. I really, really like that. Yeah. This is how, so you went from, you know, uh, this dating circle where you were saying, this is what I don't want. Mm -hmm. You found that you kept attracting that more. Mm -hmm. more, more. Mm -hmm. So yeah. at what point did you switch that off and then you meet your husband? Well, I think I switched it off when I was going through a relationship after relationship. And, you know, when I tell you I've, try finding my soulmate and I was try looking I try finding my looking. yeah which is not the way you should go about it because right. you no 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 you should not actively you should be who you are live your life mm -hmm. and as you're living you will yeah. find that mm -hmm. right but I was actively looking and I think I was sending off certain signal like uh, that needy sig signal like oh save me save me save me right. but so international, I've, you know, dated, uh, you know, uh, Italian guy, like I told you, Scottish, this, this. That's why when I say, man, when you take away whatever, it's, he's still, you know, he's man, yeah, yeah, inside, right? So when I realized that I'm giving out this needy thing, I have to find out who I am first right. as Vida. Right. Then once I found that out, I realized I'm enough just how I am and who I am then I relaxed that then I wasn't so looking for my soulmate I need to find him oh, you know how they, we get we need to find him at this day I was like no that's not me I'm not doing that so once I let go of that then I was living my life I was like I've had enough I'm just gonna spend time with myself and just and I, maybe I shouldn't have said that I'm just gonna spend time with myself because that's when I found him on my birthday and you were spending time with yourself self yeah my wow. girlfriend had given me a wonderful birthday party and we decided to you know try to go to the i'm just leading it was a two-level place and i'm leaning down and just you know my sister and my friends all of them were back there and um oh, yeah. yeah and i was uh, leaning over there and I feel someone like, you know, when you feel someone staring at you, you just feel it, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, someone's staring. I don't know who it is and things like that. So I'm just standing there. And then this man, and he was, now my husband, I'm seven years older than him. But we look like the same age, okay? Like fine wine, <laughs> ladies, <laughs> fine wine, right? We don't age. But anyway, so uh, he came up and uh, very handsome man. Oh, you, you know, you met my husband, I think. Yeah. I haven't met him. I've seen photos. You see, I, I yeah. haven't met him. 
At the YMCA, thank you, you have, yeah, because he was here? like, yeah. Oh, he was? Yeah, because okay. everybody was like, he's the strongest guy we've seen, okay? He's Romanian, so, you know, he's like... Tough guy. Yeah, he's tough guy without wanting to be tough. He's just, right? So he comes up to me, and he's like, hello. And he had an accent then, because mm -hmm. I just had met him. He had just, I think he was in Canada for all by himself. From Romania, he came all by himself. He's been living there, but he still had his accent. Right. And that's funny because I never liked that accents before. But <laughs> here we go. Yeah. Yeah. So he approached me and he was like, "Oh, you're a very beautiful woman, and um, can I take you out for coffee sometimes?" And I said to him, "I don't drink coffee." Mm, of course. And he said, nah. "Yeah." Mm. You know, I'm giving him a hard time without even meaning to. I didn't want to, but I don't drink coffee, right? right. So he said, then how about juice? <laughs> <laughs> I like this guy. He said juice. <laughs> I was like, I was like taken apart back right. by that because I was like, oh, he didn't give up. I mean, he didn't give up. He asked for something else, juice. I wasn't expecting that. I was yeah. like, juice? And he yeah. said, yeah. Then he asked me for my number, and I said, uh, no, why don't I take your number? Because I always, I never give a guy my number. I want to take his number. And then I can decide without, you know, like, whatever, embarrassing him or anything, whether I want to call him or not, and this and that, because I got to be now choosy, right? right? So, yeah, so I took, he gave me his number, and... Um, to this day, he reminds me of uh, Arnold, you know, the accent? Yeah, Arnold. 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 Yeah, a young, ver very, very young version of okay. Arnold. Okay. Yeah, so with the accent and everything. But the weirdest thing is that same night after we talked and exchanged number, I saw him again in a separate place from where I'm I, in the club. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I was like, whoa, this doesn't happen. Something strange is happening here. Right, right. And I got a little nervous. I'm like, why did I see him? Stalking. Not even that, not even stalking oh, because no, that. I didn't think that because um, he didn't know where I was going to go. Right. I was with my sister. We decided, oh, let's stop here. We were taking the cab. Let's stop here for get the hot dog. You know, in Toronto, they have hot dog stands yeah. all over. Yeah. So it was far from the place. So we stopped at this place. And he's like there at the time. You know, he's a young guy. He's it's working. A different night? The same night, oh, but just geez. different location. Just different he's location. taking, yeah, he doesn't drive. So he's taking the bus. Imagine that. Europe, wow. the Europeans can save money like nobody's business. He's taking <laughs> the bus instead of the taxi. Right. And uh, I met him there. And I was like, this is strange. Right. And I waved to him, and he took the bus. I said, no, no, he wanted to come over to buy the hot dog. I said, no, no, go home. And I met him again. So I thought that was strange. Right. And even the number, I had misplaced his number. But one day out of the blue, minding my own business, this number appeared in a place where I don't usually put, it was written on a piece of paper that I don't usually. You didn't have self -defense. No. <laughs> no. Now I'm giving my age, eh? this is going, nobody had cell phones. <laughs> or the, or the cell phones were expensive, you know, those big old cell phones that, you know, no, they didn't have that and you, nobody could afford it. So. so I saw the number and I said, oh, that's strange. Let me just, uh, just call this guy. So I called him and he wasn't there and I left the message and he called back. I wasn't there and he got my name wrong. He called me instead of Vida, he called me. Fida, or f with an F, Fida, or something. I was like, look at this guy, man. He can't even pronounce my name right, you know? I can't pronounce anybody's name. You know? Yeah, so I shouldn't... Women do not hold that against guys when they get the name, whatever, they you know, wrong. wrong. They don't mean it and stuff. So, yeah, so we made arrangement to meet and uh, made him wait five hours. You were late? I was so late because I'm even late. That's five hours. That's like a, I know a it was. Yeah, I was coming from Scarborough. If anybody knows Tr Scarborough, to all the way downtown, like Eaton Center. Okay. And my sister. Is Eaton Center around the Rogers Center. 
That's a round of same uh, Round, sort of, okay. yeah. Not, yeah, general, that not so far. Too, yeah. Transit, probably. Transit. Uh, yeah, in Scarborough, you have to take, like, two buses just to get to Kennedy Station, then Kennedy all the way up to Young, and then Young down to Dundas, and you know what I mean? So, there, it's no excuse, but it was not. Is he still there waiting? He was waiting. He had, and actually it was my oldest sister's fault because she went shopping and I was like, you got to take me home so I can get ready to go to my date. When I left, he called my sister and uh, she said, oh, well, she left a while, a while ago. And I got there five hours later and this man is still waiting and it was hot, you know, Toronto weather, like yeah, summertime, yeah. hot. Oh, wow. And he doesn't like heat. He likes skiing and cold and stuff, okay? But I he, like heat. He, he waited. He yeah. was about to get some heat. <laughs> <laughs> he, he wanted some heat, so he waited five hours. Wow. Yeah, and to this day, he never forgets it. He said, remember, I waited five hours That's for you, five, so... Okay. Don't think I don't care, you know, but yeah, and he was there and he wasn't even mad at well, because it's a new date and he liked me. So, so he wasn't going to be mad. I know, but and I apologized. And also I look so cute yeah. Yeah. and I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. You know how we do, right? <laughs> And he just forgave. He was like, oh, you look nice. I said, oh, thank you. I'm so sorry. Uh, you know, that little thing, you know. Ladies, when a man's mad at you, that Barbie doll, like, eh, it works. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, it works. Don't be arguing with the guy and this and, uh, you know. Don't raise your voice more than him. When he raises his voice, that's when yours should be more like, oh, honey, you know. Yeah, trust me on that. Yeah, <laughs> dating 101. Dating <laughs> 101, definitely. Oh, wow. Yeah, That's it was, yeah. Day. And we've been together for over 25 years. 25 years. Yeah, with the same person. And he's, he's pretty, he's a cool guy. He's not an easy man, and I, that's not what I want. I want a man, man. So he's, you know, he's a pretty cool guy, but he never lets me get away with too much. Just enough. You know, just the five hours. That was enough. Five, yeah, that was enough. He was like five hours. That's enough. <laughs> but we we had a fantastic time. We talked and we got along really well. So I was like, even then I wasn't even thinking about marriage, right? So, so it's, it's interesting. The person that was not didn't want to get married ended up actually. I ended up getting married, and you know I've been with them so long. So it's like, how long? Okay, so you guys started dating. How long was it before the marriage came about? Who did the proposal? I mean, Matt oh, was him. wow. Uh, yeah. yeah, it was yeah, him. Because yeah. he's old school that way. You know, he was, uh, okay, so he's he, Romanian, so he was raised by mom and dad in Romania back in the communists, you know, when Romania wasn't communist. So he saw a lot of things that, you know, a young man shouldn't see, people being friends, being shot, and, mm -hmm. you know, all these craziness. Mm -hmm. So he's old school. So, um, Basically, yeah, of course, he, he's the one that proposed. And um, when we're dating, what I told him, and this is another one for you ladies out there, mm -hmm. just to see if he's for real. Pay attention. Uh-uh. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you very much. I told him, you, listen, mm -hmm. Everybody listen, I told him, you are not getting any sweetness until I've known you for one year. Oh, <laughs> How do you expect that? Even fighting over a guy, two women are fighting over a guy. I'm like, excuse me, let that man go. If he did, hasn't made his mind up, you make your mind up for yourself and let him go. So I, I just threw out a year there. Because remember, I was tired just dating back and forth and stuff like that. So he didn't say much. He just went, I know he, he opened his eyes really wide and I know he was like, what? What is going on here? <laughs> One year. What is this? Prison sentence? Get out of here. <laughs> but actually, you know, I said one year. That was like the maximum. 
but just so that he'll take his time and get to know me. If he really wants to know me and stuff, it's in his court. He can start getting to know me. And you men have a certain way about you that you, you know the dance. So if a woman's saying that, get to know her more. Take your time and trust me, if you're good to her and you're really honest, you won't have to wait a year. But if you're not, then a year comes by, out the door, buddy. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but don't you think sometimes, though, uh, I don't know about that, but mm -hmm. especially now, um, you know, a woman, I feel, could throw like a year out of a certain guy. I don't think she does that with every guy. She might throw, you know, some people get a, a lot of it or something like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But what if it's mm -hmm. a situation where the woman's, you know, this guy like the woman, she throws a year at him, and he's like, okay, I'm going to do everything I can. But what if, like, she's seeing somebody? Will you see somebody else in those times? Oh, like, no, 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 no. Okay, so I, I don't just, play that, yeah. yeah you were just kind of... Yeah, with so just what him. if the woman is kind of like... Doing that? Around doing that. What? Well, first of all, if she's doing that, then she's really not the woman for you because you're, I'm, I know men used to do that, mm -hmm. right? And now things have turned around where women are doing the same thing that they complained the men were doing, now they're doing it, right? Mm -hmm. Because if a woman throws a year out to you, right, and she's really interested in you, it means basically you're building up to something more right, right. but if she throws a year at you and she's with other people then she's just using that just to keep you on the line because right. she's getting something she's and getting then something and then going out and l doing her own thing right she wants something from you it's not it's not a commitment it's not love it's not whatever she's getting something and that's it and i don't agree with that that's being like using using that and yeah and fellas take notes mm -hmm. no 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 because i always feel like with me i always feel like you can throw whatever principles it is mm -hmm. but i also hold you to the same expectation as well yes because if that expectation is going a certain way in fact i just kind of like you know i just need to see one or two things and i'm like hmm whatever yes that respect isn't there for me anymore i'm not really interested if something was to you know go somewhere mm -hmm. in terms of you know the sweetness the sugar mm -hmm. uh, if that happens great if it doesn't happen but at that point and if it does happen at that point I, it still wouldn't change my mindset because yeah. you're already kind of showing me a different person yeah and you remember the sweetness is just icing on the cake you're getting like you know what i mean mm -hmm. it's you're getting the whole person so the sweetness is the icing because okay. the more okay. yeah the more you get to the, know the person the more it becomes it, it is sweeter. Mm -hmm. It gets sweeter as you know them and find out how they tick and things like that, right? So for me, I can only focus one-on-one. -on -one. That's how I prefer it. And even like back in the days growing up, I liked uh, the old classic movies, you know, like the old, you know, the old um, black, and white. black and white, you know, like... Uh, you know, everything like proper. everything, the men wore suits and the hat, and then they had to go on dates. So for me, I think I'm an old soul like that, you know, Cary Grant and all those guys, you know, with the suit and they make sure they took the woman out, open the door, this and that. Mm -hmm. So I wanted some, I wanted to slow it down. I wanted to enjoy the whole part of dating. And they, they called it courting, you know whenever my mom's days and stuff but it's the same thing I wanted to slow it down and enjoy this person enjoy just knowing them without the kids coming without all these drama and stuff so that when the hard time comes you remember you live it with that person you go oh remember when we went here and this and did that and whatever mm -hmm. so yes to take the time and date each other get to know each other that way, your bond is even stronger, right? And maybe that's what we did. We went uh, to a lot of places. We traveled. And even when um, my oldest son came, mm -hmm. we would travel to Romania with him. We would do different things together. And so it became like a bond and a family, not just, you know, uh, not just, oh, you're a man and, yeah, you, woman, a man. Yeah, but this is really my friend. I want you to be my friend. Right. And I want you to be more my partner in life. Right. So that means having a conversation, being able to sit and eat with you and be okay or 
going out on the field and playing soccer or whatever you want to do or working out together, right? Yeah. So um, that's what I, I wanted, and I wouldn't settle for less. So, that's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. I, wow. I, Thank you so much. Oh, Jared. no problem. Let's, let's do this. <laughs> this is, uh, you know, uh, when I was coming to Windsor, I said, normally I do this episode for about half an hour, 40 minutes. <laughs> but I knew that I haven't been here for such a long time. And if I was going to be sitting down, mm -hmm. um, you know, being blessed to sit here with my sis and oh, have this you. conversation, then I knew that I would have to extend that hour. The only way I would have to cut it or interrupt or anything like that is if, you know, the conversation isn't really flowing. Yeah, yes. yeah you know, mm -hmm. it's not really going anywhere. Yes, Sometimes yes. Sometimes you get those too, even in this sphere. Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> so, but this is such an intriguing conversation, and I know this could go on for much longer, uh, to be honest with you. <laughs> um, but I wanted to say now is was there anything else that you would like to even talk about something that we haven't talked about yet and you'd like to bring up that we can talk about um yeah yeah just basically um what's going on now it's like we're it seems like the world is, is in chaos right now right mm -hmm. we've been bombarded with so many things especially you look in the u.s you know it's not only the covid it's like misunderstanding and between you know the politics the races the this that and it's happening all over the world right what i i just want to say is that no matter what you have to have hope that all this is teaching us something there's lessons to be learned in that we shouldn't be fearful we should be cautious but not fearful mm -hmm. that all things work out right that things are might seem chaotic but there's you know there's you know hope in that even right. and just not to give up and just to hold on and just cherish the people around you cherish the friends and family and all those that are around you and just keep living life keep living life properly meaning treating people how you want to be treated you know and don't say things you don't mean and, you know, if you do mean it, then, you know, whatever. Why? Find out why you mean that. You know, treat people how you want to be treated, basically, you know? That's yeah, basically, yeah. Thank you so much. Oh, no now. problem. What is, Thank what is you. Your handle? Let the people know where they can find you. And well, you can find me on Instagram at C Vida Motives. You can find me on Facebook under the same and uh and then you can also find me uh twitter uh what else is there uh You're on twitter i'm on twitter can you believe it i'm on twitter i still have to figure out how apps twitter works i've gotten the whole gist of instagram and facebook member i'm i'm still learning i had right. to get my kids to teach me how all this works i'm very good on instagram and Facebook, I'm um, on Twitter, you know, so um, yeah, search for me, especially on Instagram. You know, if you need anything, contact me, DM. Yeah. Thank you so much. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, brother, for this. Thank this you is all for Be sure to subscribe to the channel and follow Vida. Uh, I will have all of her handles down below, um, so you will be able to access her page uh, directly, all of them. And so I want to say thank you all for supporting the channel and continuing to support. You know, it's still a pretty small channel yet. We're building every day as we go and bringing in new interesting people with lots of stories. And hopefully, uh, yeah, you all let us know what it is you got, what's the most valuable thing you got from this particular conversation here today. Again, you can follow uh, 18 Avenue Podcast on all platforms. Uh, that's Apple platforms, uh, Spotify, Anchor, 